We're in full lockdown here, so we can only dive with one other person or your family. Fortunately, my main dive partner is my brother. With the coronavirus restrictions and our the CDI unit on our boat motor blowing out. We've uh, had to do a lot of diving out of our original boat, aka the kayak lately. Stick around to the end where I talk about my my recommendation for a spear gun to get when you're starting out. I'd also love it if you could leave in the comments below what's the biggest fish that you've shot with a small gun. And little hint, the gun that I'm recommending is quite a small gun. So yeah, include uh, some details about the biggest fish or the best fish that you've shot with a tiny gun. Without further ado, let's have a look at the clips. Hey no Visalites, so yep, another day and another kayak mission. Once again it's me and my baby bro and this time we opted for a lovely couple of hundred meter walk with all of our gear and our heavy AF kayak. Nobody else but you You caught my eye And I've got a feeling I'm falling Show me the ring and I'll jump right through So after a few years of sea launching our kayaks and losing a lot of gear we now have a technique that works fairly well Basically we walk the kayak out to the middle of the break where the waves lose their energy wait for a gap and one person jumps in and the other person pushes. Lately we've been experimenting with the technique to drift dive with the kayaks by tying two float lines together and using the kayak as a big bulky float. It's kind of painful but it kind of works. Anyway, that's the plan. See you out there. The old bratty. It's not a Louie. Show me the ring and I'll jump right through. I used to. Through. I used to. To begin with, we decided to dive the shallows. To have a bit of a warm up, and also because my brother insists that I master the shallows, a skill according to him I am yet to acquire. I was immediately greeted on the reef by this graphic tusk fish. However, he was a little on the smaller side, so I let him pass and instead turned my attention to a grassy emperor sitting mid water column, which made for an easy shot on a normally challenging fish. I thought I might share a few tips on shooting graphic tusk fish. These fish are very common in shallow inshore reefs on the Sunshine Coast up to Bundaberg and are a great fish to target when you're starting out and you want to turn your attention to slightly more challenging reef fish. I find with graphic tusk fish that the less interest you show in them, the closer in they will come. Also try not to shoot the first one you see, as usually when you see a little one, there is a much bigger one close by. In this clip you can see that I spooked the fish at first and so I focused my attention elsewhere whilst moving slowly in its general direction. This allowed me to get a lot closer. All right, so, ah! Oh. That was actually much better than we expected, eh, Louie? Yeah, nice. Yeah, the viz is not too bad either. 10 metres? Yeah. And um, we shot a few good table fish. Much better than I expected, really, all things considered. All right, well, we're going to reset the drift and start again. <laughs> Oh, 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 
Another tip for graphic tusk fish is that the juvenile fish are lighter or more yellow in colour and the larger ones have more of a blue colouring. After taking this fish we decided to turn our attention away from the reef species and to try to target some larger pelagic fish which is essentially El Spano Macos, aka Spanish Macos. I mean, the other way around. That'll be the last graphic that I'll shoot. At this stage, we decided to try some deeper pinnacles out wider. I whipped out my phone and we painstakingly made our way out further, paddling and rechecking our course every 10 minutes. The water out here was even cleaner and the ridge held a lot of bait. It wasn't long before... At this point here I've managed to shoot a decent sized Spanish mackerel and because I didn't have a belt reel I've handed the gun to my brother and started to pull the line in. Unfortunately the GoPro died at this stage but the next few minutes went a little like this. One, two, three, four. Rainbows, unicorns, everything nice. Yeah! Brush your teeth. We then began the massive journey back in and yes we did flip the kayak as usual. But this time everything was tied down, so we didn't lose anything. Just our dignity. Oh wait, we never had that to begin with. Alright, so I just wanted to quickly take this tiny little bit of downtime while Lucas is making coffee. Oh, here he comes. Uh, quickly talk about uh, the spear gun that I'd recommend for beginners. I get asked this a little bit. So, this is the first gun that I got. It's the Picasso Asagai. It's a really small gun. And the advantage of that is that when you're starting out, you're probably going to be diving in pretty crappy conditions. You're going to be swimming around in murky water. If you don't want a really big gun that you're going to be banging into things. You're going to want a tiny little gun that's easy to load, like you can see here. It's just super easy to load. The other advantage of this gun is that because it's so small, you have to get a lot closer than a bigger gun to fish. And that's actually a really good thing when you start out. You're going to take pot shots all the time. You're not really going to get close enough. And this gun will sort of force you to get closer to the fish. And it will actually develop much better habits. It's really a no-frills gun. You know, it's nothing special. It's just got a safety, regular handle. Uh, it's only just a 7mm or a 6.5mm spear, so it's a cheap spear replacement. The rubbers are really small. You can see these rubbers, we've essentially had them on the gun for the last year or so. And it's cool because you can actually snap them into place. Well, at least that one you can snap into place. So you can make your rubbers separately and then put them in into the gun itself. In the dad shoes. 